Hey, what's going on everybody? Welcome to Point of Attack. Today I'm going to be breaking down the Carolina Panthers by demand. I've had quite a few people actually ask me to do this. And even though we talked about them briefly in our video for the NFC South breakdown, I figured I'd just go a little bit more in depth for uh, the Carolina Panther fans out there that, you know, so they know what to expect this upcoming season. And I'm sure Carolina Panther fans already know, you know, where they're at right now. And, you know, first and foremost, the very first thing that needs to be mentioned is Carolina is rebuilding. They are in a rebuilding phase. You know, the past nine years, they had Ron Rivera as their coach, and they were good for most of those years. He was a very successful coach, but at the same time, a team gets to a point where you just, you need a a new face in there, a new change of scenery. Things can get stale in the locker room and, you know, players may start to, to lose faith in the coach. And this was a team that, you know, was in a Super Bowl only four seasons ago. So they're not that far removed from being very, very good. Now, anybody that watched last year saw they went 5-11. and 11, But the biggest issue was Cam Newton, their starting quarterback and their number one pick, got hurt. So whenever you lose a starter like that, it, it's going to be a tough road having to use a backup. And granted, Kyle Allen stepped in, and he did okay to start with. You know, he wasn't that same type of caliber player as Cam Newton was, so they weren't able to have that same success. So, you know, this year, the owner decides that it, it's time for a change. You know, it, it had been nine years. They'd been to the top of the mountain, but weren't quite able to get that Super Bowl win. So it's time to start rebuilding. So they let Cam Newton go. And as of right now, Cam Newton's not even on a team, which is kind of shocking because um, anybody that knows, I've never been a huge fan of Cam Newton. I always thought he was lacking the accuracy and the decision-making it takes to be a top-tier quarterback. But, I mean, God knows he was extremely athletic and could do things a lot of quarterbacks couldn't. Also because of his size, you know, he's just enormous, you know, 6'6", 250, he's a monster quarterback. So he brought a lot of extra tangibles to the table that most quarterbacks couldn't. But when it came down to him having to sit in the pocket and actually throw the ball accurately, he, he really did struggle with that. He wasn't consistent enough. So they move on from him and they brought in Teddy Bridgewater. And uh, Teddy Bridgewater is a quarterback that, you know, has played all over the league. He, he, you know, this is like his third different team. But when he's had a chance to start, he has been very, very good. And granted, he had that horrific leg injury when he was in Minnesota, and then he didn't really recover for it. They signed Kirk Cousins. He moved on. He went to New Orleans. And last year, he got a chance to start six games when Drew Brees went down. And he was 5-1 and one in those games. And the one loss he had, he actually came in in the middle of the game when Breeze went down and just wasn't able to lead a comeback. But with the Saints, he was a very good quarterback. You know, he went 5-1. and one. Now, granted, the Saints team, the uh, caliber players they had around him were exceptional. You know, they were a very, very good team to begin with. So bringing Teddy in, you know, he had a lot to work with and a lot around him. It's going to be a different scenario for him now actually in Carolina because he doesn't have necessarily those exact same weapons with, you know, one of the best wide receivers in the league with Michael Thomas and a top running back with Alvin Kamara. You know, they New Orleans was stacked. So it's going to look a little different with Teddy Bridgewater. Um, now, not only do they have a new quarterback, they've got a brand new coaching staff. And when they signed Matt Rule as their coach, this was one of those signings that um, – at least for me, I felt like they could have done a lot better picking up a coach because there were higher caliber coaches that were available that they didn't really look to. You know, Matt Rule coming out of Baylor was 19 and 20 overall. Now, granted, 11 of those 20 losses were in his first season when they went 1 and 11. And then they went like 6 and 6 the following year. And then his last year there, they actually went 11 and 1. And the one thing Matt Rule is known for is being able to build programs. So hopefully that will translate into the NFL. And that's the thing. We just don't really know how he's going to be because he's never coached in the NFL. 
So it, it's going to be an interesting transition to see how he does. Now, granted, he did win the Big 12 Coach of the Year in his last year at Baylor. So obviously this guy can coach. And like I said, he brought a 1-11 team to 11-1 you know, in, in only two seasons. So that was a, a huge turnaround for him. And he's great at player development. You know, he's had over 30 players get drafted into the NFL that he was able to coach and coach up to that level that, you know, now they're NFL caliber players. So between Baylor and him coaching at Temple before that, he has able to turn a lot of players into NFL caliber guys. So um, that type of thing going to Carolina, the fact that they are rebuilding with a lot of fresh, young, new guys is, is kind of in his favor because if he can build programs the way everybody thinks he can, th this is a very good test for him because he's really going to have to build this team up. Um, another big problem with the team last year was their defense. Their defense was almost last in the league. You know, they, they were giving up 29.4 points a game, pretty much 30 points a game. You cannot win football games doing that. That was second to last in the league. There was only one team worse than them on defense. So, I mean, I don't have to tell you that that's not a statistic that you want to have. So because of how poor their defense was last year, when they went out in the draft, they made sure that they got all defensive players. They didn't draft one offensive player in the entire draft. You know, they went out and grabbed Derek Brown with their seventh pick, the D tackle from Auburn, to try to help you know, stop the bleeding on defense. And then they also grabbed um, Jeremy Chin out of Southern Illinois, who's a safety. And he's going to have to replace Eric Reed because Eric Reed left. And that is a huge, huge hole to fill now. And an even bigger hole to fill, <clears throat> excuse me, is that middle linebacker. Because Luke Keekley, one of the best linebackers in the league since he came in, he's one of the, one of the most cerebral linebackers too. He's got such a nose for the football. He's incredibly smart. Um, you hear stories about offensive players and offensive linemen talking about how he's literally, as the offense is coming to the line, he has diagnosed the play already. He knows exactly what they're going to run, and he's telling his teammates what play is about to come. So, you know, this, this kid was an absolute student of the game and f absolute phenomenal linebacker. And, you know, he retires because he's had quite a few injuries and concussions and he's more worried about, you know, his long-term effect and his health than continuing to play, which, you know, I applaud him for that. You know, to, to turn away from millions of dollars because you're worried about, you know, how your health is going to be later in life is, is a smart decision. And it's not an easy decision to make either to turn all that money down. And, you know, some people don't. They're like, whatever, I'll deal with it then and you know, they wind up punch drunk, which you, you don't want to have to have to deal with later in life. So he makes a smart decision and, and does retire, but he does leave a huge hole there for them. Now, they went out in free agency and they grabbed um, Tahir Whitehead from Oakland, who's a middle linebacker. And he's he's very good. He's not Luke Caliber good, but he is very good. You know, he's He's always got over 100 tackles a year, and he'll have a few sacks here and there. Um, I don't know if he's got the same mental capacity that Luke Keekley had where he's going to be able to be that defensive captain and like that quarterback type that will be able to diagnose plays and tell his linemen and everybody else where they should be, where they should stand, make the adjustments, stuff like that. But um, I do know that physically he's very gifted. He's fast. He can cover. You know, he's a big kid. He's... He's a good linebacker. We just don't know if he's going to be that Luke Keekley type. And he's got very big shoes to fill. That's the other problem. So their defense has to get better. And they did address it in the draft. They went out and they got, you know, seven draft picks all for the defense, which I'm sure we'll all try and, and um, make adjustments through the year so that they can get on the field and play because you don't know if they're up to that caliber yet to be able to start in the NFL. So we're going to have to wait and see how that defense is. Now, like I said, they did get a new coaching staff, so they also brought in a new defensive coordinator. And again, it's, you know, you're just not sure how he's going to be because Phil Snow was a coach for Baylor. So obviously Matt Rule being the coach of Baylor brought his defensive coordinator with him. So, you know, obviously there's favoritism there and you just hope that 
he can make the transition and coach in NFL because a lot of guys that come from college do struggle to coach in NFL. Now, the one thing I can say about Phil Snow is that he's got 37 seasons in college. This guy is extremely experienced. You know, to have almost four decades around football, you got to think he knows what the hell he's doing. So I don't think the transition will be that hard for him. And hopefully he's got the caliber of players that he can be successful. So, you know, on defense, having a new defensive coordinator, a lot of new faces, as I said, they're going to be rebuilding. So I don't expect a whole lot out of the Carolina Panthers this year. But maybe in the next two to three seasons, you know, you have to trust the process and maybe they'll start to improve. Now, that's not to say that they, you know, they can't be good this upcoming season because that absolutely can happen. But when you have new coaches like that, it's very hard. And even on the offensive side of the ball, where you you think they're probably going to be pretty good because they have Teddy Bridgewater, which is a very capable, good quarterback. And then they have, hands down, the best running back in the league. Christian McCaffrey is the best running back in the league. And if you don't believe it, you are just a hater. Because if you look at the kids' numbers, they are out of control. He should have won the MVP last year. He had the fourth best season any running back has ever had. He had almost 2,400 all-purpose yards, 1,300 rushing, and 1,000 receiving. The guy is like having a wide receiver and a running back on the field at the same time. He's a defensive nightmare. He is so hard to match up against. And the most impressive thing about watching him last year was the fact that because their offense was so stagnant and their quarterback couldn't really throw it around because they were using backups and stuff like that, the defenses knew where the ball was going every single play. And they still couldn't stop him. He still put up exceptional numbers, even though the defense knew it was going to him. So that says a lot about, you know, who he is and how good he is. So Teddy Bridgewater does have that, you know, high caliber running back to lean on. And then as far as their wide receivers went, you know, they do have some good wide receivers now. They went out and picked up Robbie Anderson in free agency, who is a very good wide receiver, and they have DJ Moore and Curtis Samuel. So they have a good stable of wide receivers. Not exceptional, but still very, very good. So Teddy Bridgewater does have some weapons to play with here. And uh, not only that, they brought in Joe Brady as their coach. And a lot of people probably have no clue who Joe Brady is. But Joe Brady was the passing coordinator for LSU last year. Joe Brady is the guy that introduced the offense to Joe Burrows to make him be the most celebrated college quarterback of all time. He's the reason Joe Brady broke every damn record there was in college football for passing because he was the passing game coordinator. So that's the one thing Carolina did do. They brought in a very young, fresh coach that is very, very with today's type of football and how it is played. And majority of the NFL now is an air it out game. You know, very few teams are a 50-50 kind of team where they run 50% and pass 50%. Most of the time now, it's you're throwing 70% and running. So that, you know, bringing a guy in like that is a very smart move because he can coach. He's had, you know, very, very good success in college. And hopefully that will translate to uh, the NFL. And I, I really like Joe Brady, Every everything about him. You know, I wouldn't even have been upset if they hired him as the head coach. Even though he doesn't have the experience, he reminds me of a Sean McVay, where he's a forward thinker and innovator. And I, I think he's, he's going to be very, very good in this league because he is a good coach. And you saw him take an LSU program that was predominantly a run first type of offense in their, you know, their past couple of years in history. You look at how they how they won. It was a very stiff defense and run the ball. They weren't like an air it out type team. And then last year it was completely different. I mean, granted they could run the ball very well, but Joe Burrow aired it out and you know, you saw the numbers he put up, they were just absolutely sterile, stellar 5,000 yards passing 60 touchdowns. It was just insane. So bringing in Joe Brady is another big move for them. So, um, The biggest issue with the Carolina Panthers is the fact that, one, they're rebuilding, like I said, and two, the division that they play in is going to be very tough. So 
for them this year, I see them as like a seven and nine, eight and eight team, unless somehow they can gel quicker and they're a little better than than people thought. Maybe they can have a winning record, but I don't see them making the playoffs this year. And it's strictly because the division they play in. When you have to play in the same division with the New Orleans Saints, who are going to be Super Bowl contenders, and now you have Tampa Bay, which looks like, yes, they are rebuilding too, but a little more talented. They just got Tom Brady in there. You know, I think Tampa Bay is a possible wild card team. So now in their own division, they have two other teams that they got to play twice a year and also compete with to get a wild card spot in the playoffs. So I don't expect them to be a playoff team this year. I do see that in their future because they do have the talent, but I know playing football for the years I did, it does take chemistry and that takes time. So I I think in maybe another season or two, then they're competing for a playoff spot, especially as the league changes and, you know, maybe Drew Brees retires and their division gets a little easier then I can see them competing for that playoff spot. But this year, I see them, as I, like I said, as a 7-9, 8-8 team. If, if they can play 500 football, that is an improvement from last year. You know, just not having a losing season would be great. And anything over eight wins would be a pleasant surprise. And like I said, that can happen. I mean, stranger things have happened. You have no idea. Teddy Bridgewater could step in there, and they could just start rolling. And they could be a you know, a dark horse that nobody saw coming because everybody, including myself, was like, well, they're in a rebuilding year, so it's going to take time. But who knows? They can come out and shock the world and really be, you know, better than everybody expected. So, you know, you can always be optimistic and feel like that can happen. But if you want to be realistic on what to expect, it's it's more of a 500 or one game less than that kind of year. So, you know, it. I hate to say it, I don't, see a lot out of Carolina this year, but I do see them trending in the right direction. So uh, Carolina fans, it's it's going to get better. Uh, It won't be as bad as last year, but it's also, you know, not going to be quite where you want it to be this season. So, but there is a lot to look forward to in the future. And, uh, you know, I I hate to, where you have to say you got to wait and see, but really that's, that's all you can do. You can just wait and see. But, uh, it will be a better year than last year, but it's not going to quite be the, the stellar year that you were hoping for. But, you know, anything can happen. But I, I hope that, uh you know, it gives you some hope for the future. And I hope you enjoy watching. And I appreciate you guys watching. And I pre- uh, appreciate all the comments. And, uh, you know, keep them coming. Keep the requests coming. I have no problem breaking down any teams, videos you want to hear. You just let me know the topic. And, uh I'll give you my thoughts on it and stuff like that. So I appreciate you guys watching and um, enjoy your Memorial Day weekend. Be safe out there. Peace.